Before passing any HTML pages, we first need to understand what our response is and what it actually looks like. Looking at a website and trying to work out which parts of the HTML our data is in is a good place to start, but are we looking at exactly what our script sees? The HTML DOM or the document object model is possibly the first thing that we check when we're assessing a site, but this isn't necessarily going to get us the results that we want. And this is because of the way that we're looking at the data through our browser. The DOM consists of what our browser has interpreted from the server's response. It's executed scripts on the page, maybe done some error correction, and it's manipulated it into what we see on the screen. Conversely, our scripts, usually running Python requests, only gets what the server sends us back, the raw information. There is no browser in between to interpret all the data, and that means that there's a disconnect between what we see in the DOM and what we're actually getting in our code. This is one of the main reasons why you might fail scraping a site. So what is the DOM? Let's take a quick look at the Mozilla developer webpage. It says that the DOM is a programming interface for HTML and XML document. It represents the page so that programs can change the document structure, style, and content. Now this is important. It is an object that can be used to change what, how the page looks, what elements are where, and more importantly, where the content is shown. If something is changing the data or the content on the page as it's loaded in the browser, then the response that we get from requests querying the server won't be what we see on the page itself. That something is almost always called JavaScript. The DOM is an object oriented representation of the web page, which can be modified with a scripting language such as JavaScript. This is where the script execution and rendering needs to happen before we can access the actual text data within the elements. But before we go over that, let's have a quick look at the DOM tree a bit more. So in its basic form, the DOM is made up of nodes and elements. This all comes under the main document object. Think of this document like the root directory. Under that comes nodes, and these represent every kind of object location within the document containing some kind of data. The one we're most interested in is the element. This is a node type, and in this example contains all the HTML data that creates the template for the page. Things like tables, lists, and paragraphs are all found here, and this is pretty much where you'll find the text data that you want to get at. So how does this differ from the source? As I said, the server response with no rendering or interpretation is what we get back from the server when we create a request with Python. We get the actual script information, the blueprint, if you like, for what our browser needs to do. There'll often be no text at all, as there will be a part in that script that goes off and gets that information from the API. It might also be called dynamically whenever the user interacts with the web page by scrolling down or clicking a button. However, having said that, the source code is a good place to start because it shows exactly what our code is seeing. We can actually search through it to see if there's anything in there that we might want to get. Sometimes there is actual information stored within the script tags that we can pass out without having to do any rendering. If you're looking to play around with something like that, I definitely recommend saving that response to a text file and using it in your editor to have a look through. So is the DOM ever the same as the source? Well, yes, quite often less JavaScript heavy sites or basically simple HTML web pages, the, the document object model will be exactly the same as the source code and will contain all the HTML tags and information that you might be after. A good thing you can do is you can use the inspect tool in your browser to have a look at the DOM object and then compare some of that to the source code to see what sort of website you're looking at or in most modern browsers, you can actually disable JavaScript and have your browser not render any of the script code and see what's actually available on the page. So a bit more on passing pages. Uh, when presented with a site to scrape, there's always a few things that I check first uh, in order to determine sort of what method I'm gonna take. The first thing I tend to do is, is look at the DOM and then I compare it to the source code like I just mentioned. And I'll often to copy a bit of the specific text information I'm after and search with it both within the document object model and within the source code to see where they actually are and to see if I can get it without, without any rendering. If you look closely, sometimes you might find that that text data is installed inside a script tag or it's just hanging out on a page somewhere. And if you're lucky, it might even look like JSON, so it's nice and easy to grab. If neither of those options will work though, you might want to look at using a renderer. Uh, there's a few options for this. Uh, request HTML has the render function, which uses um, a small, like a lightweight version of a browser in the background that will actually load the page and then send the, that HTML representation back to you. Uh, and that can help and it does work, but it's generally a bit slow. The better option, in my opinion, is always to look to see if you can find the API endpoint that the website is using to get that information from. 
As I said at the beginning of the video, JavaScript has the script tags that will run and get that information. And we can look in the network tab on the inspect element tool to see what the website is doing and what requests it is making. We can then mimic those in an R API program like Postman or Insomnia. And then we can translate that into Python code when we're ready to move forward. The benefit of this is that we bypass everything to do with the browser and we go straight to the source of the data. It's much quicker and much cleaner. This is my preferred method. And if you check out this video here, you'll see me running through a full project of how to do it.